So I'm getting my car ready for the trip to VCF West, and I've actually gone and put an accessory jack right back here with a 15 amp circuit breaker in the trunk of my car. The idea here is that I can use my uh, DC uh, cooler up there to keep some water cold and some food transported and a couple of other goodies. Um, protected from the extreme heat that is going to be Northern California on my trip down there. It might also be convenient to have AC power in here, so that means I want to have an inverter. Surprisingly, I do have a stash of inverters, and in this particular trip, I want a 300 watt inverter. Now, asking for a power inverter these days seems to be a bit of a crapshoot. Now, I have other inverters hiding in that box right there, which are all like, between 100 and 175 watts, I want a 300 watt inverter because I might be running my compact portable 386 while I'm in the car, as dumb as it seems. So I've just pulled out uh, four inverters that are rated for 300 watts. Now, 300 watts, you see that? 300, 300. Is that a resistive load? Is that an inductive load? Are we generating AC power as a pure sine wave, a modified sine wave, a semi-sine wave, or as a square wave? Now the reason why this is important is that, especially with switch mode power supplies, line frequency and line voltage means everything. If either of those are fluctuating, you can usually kiss goodbye to your power supply. Linear power supplies are a bit more forgiving. But as a result, we do want an inverter which can supply a healthy supply of power to an older computer or you're just going to kill your old computer. And this existed, but the better computers of the time were actually supplying their own equipment. So Osborne in this case here has this little tiny box. There's your cigarette lighter. There's your 120 volt IEC. And you just had this little tiny box that was supplied to you. Uh, now this is tuned specifically for the Osborne 1 computer, so I can't really use it on any other piece of equipment. Well, I can, but it's so um, wattage limited and current limited, it's basically designed to the specifications of running an Osborne computer off of a battery. That's it. And as a result, also, inverters have been getting increasingly cheaper and increasingly crappier just because it says 300 watts, or even says brazen enough to say 300 watts continuous 500 watt peak does it actually hold up to that now there could be an entire breakdown in this video of exactly how inverters work we could do the math but really at the end of the day let's take an example here just like without applying too much science and say i'm just going to grab an inverter and i want to put a load onto it now my application of a load here is going to be purely that of a resistive load uh, in this case here, we're going to be using a group of light bulbs, a 100, a 200, and a 300. I highly doubt we're going to get to the 300 because the inrush current for trying to make that resistive load start up is going to exceed the requirements for the inverters. Except for that 500 peak one. We'll see what happens. But here is our uh, static control here, and that is just simply AC line power. Gives us about 119 volts. That's not bad considering it's a hot day. Everyone's running their ACs. We're looking at about 60 hertz power. And what are we for load here? Well, I have the light bulb in here. And I'm just going to put a dummy load in here, which is simply a circuit breaker that is plugged in to that. Now, at no time do I ask you to ever make something like this and plug it into your wall outlet. Because all this is going to be doing is a direct short. It's just going to be used to light that bulb. So... I go to watts, turn that on, 99 watts. So there is a 100 watt bulb. So this is our control here. This is how I'm gonna be doing the testing. Let's move on to the first inverter. Our first inverter to test here is the Motomaster 300 watt inverter. It has battery lugs on one side and we have our controls here, a power switch on fault, and our two AC outlets. I also want to point out that for this video we're using all entirely used inverters. They may have problems of their own, I'm not entirely sure, but for the most part they're all pretty cheap and pretty plentiful at this time here, so whatever. On with the test. Turn it on. 
I heard a fan turned off. With zero load applied, we are 119 volts. We have a line frequency of 8.8 8 .8 hertz, 17 hertz. There we go. It picks up a little bit. Still 20 hertz. So I'm assuming it's not actually fully cycling uh, the sine wave because there's no load applied to it. That looks all about good. So let's turn on our load, 100 watts. We are now at... That's not bad, 122 volts is fine. Uh-huh, you're gonna play this game on me? Pardon the beep. 106 watts, 61.5 hertz. Okay, there we go. So what we probably heard there was either the low battery warning or a load alert. Uh, we'll see what happens here when I install the 200 watt bulb. There we go, 200 watt bulb is installed. So it didn't like 200 watts at all. Even though that gave us an extra 100 watts of inrush there, um, it would just cycle over and over and over again. And in fact, apparently we've gone into a fault mode here. What if I power cycle this? There. So it went into a fault mode and said, no, you couldn't do uh, the 200 watt bulb. Okay, so 100 watts was safe. 200 watts resistive was no good. So 300 watts, I'll consider that a fail. Next one up is the Suprex 300 watt inverter. Turn that on. That fan is constant duty. 118, 117 frequency, 12.5 hertz. Again, there's no load applied to it, so whatever. So let's bring it to our wattage. Let's turn on our 100 watt bulb. 89 watts. 112 volts, 14 hertz. Now, another thing that could be happening here is that it's completely confused because of the modified sine wave because it's not pure AC. So that's what we might be looking at here right now. Um, but that's no good, okay. Or it may be all right. Okay. So that did okay with the uh, 100 watt bulb. Let's move on to the 200. 200 watt bulb is in and... Nope, cut out. Nope. Okay, so this one here resistively couldn't handle a 200 watt bulb either. Let's move on to the next one. All right, now let's try this one. The power to go PC 300 XT 300 watt continuous 500 watt peak DC to AC inverter. This one here has a fuse built in. It's a 30 amp. It's also hardwired. And it also has a continuous fan. So we are 111 volts. Same thing. It's not fully duty cycling right now, or it's really confused because of the semi sign. Turn on our load. <sighs> okay, and that didn't even do... Um, that one didn't even do 100 watts. Really? Okay, actually, turn that on. That seemed to behave. The display... Whoa! Bad things are happening. So it doesn't like that. Oh no. Did I kill my kilowatt? Okay, no, it's fine. I plugged into regular AC power, it's working again. So it really does not like that inverter. That thing couldn't even do 100 watts, and when it could do 100 watts, something was really wrong. So let's classify this one here just as straight up junk. All right, and now the Xantrex Inverter 300. I kind of like this one. It's got this extruded metal case here, fan with a nice wire protector, battery lugs. This here shares a lot of styling in common 
with one of my old Motomaster Eliminator 175 watt inverters. I actually like this inverter a lot, so different brand. Doubt you're actually made by Motomaster, so let's see what happens here. Turn you on. 115 volts. That just DC. What was that? Okay, sure. So, interesting. And that's just the load applied to it right now. So let's apply a 100 watt load. It has a fan that turns on when load is applied. 100 watt and increasing. What's our voltage? 124, 129. That seems fine. 60 hertz. I like this. I like this one a lot. Alright, yeah, yeah. There we go. And it just notches. Ooh, and it goes quiet again. I like this one a lot. Let's move on to the 200 watt bulb. Okay, 200 watts. Nope, doesn't like it. Well, let's try this again. Now, this is another one here which doesn't seem to like having 200 watts of inductive load on it, even though it seems to be rated for 300. Hmm. It's also worth pointing out while I'm doing this here that these inverters are also doing the exact same dirty trick that we were dealing with hard drives about 20 years ago. That's 300, so you assume 300 watts. But when you flip this over, maximum 240 watts, 2.1 amps continuous. So there's our limitation right there regarding resistive and inductive loads. And also there's our output warning there regarding non-sinusoidal, I guess it is. Hold on a minute. The badge is damn near identical. Huh. Maybe they do share a lot more in common than I was thinking of. So I think for the purpose of this trip, I'm going to go with this inverter here. I mean, obviously it had its shortcomings, but it seems to be the one that was the quietest and also seemed to be the one that was a bit most, uh, the most forgiving in terms of power requirements. And also, again, I do really like this extruded enclosure that it's in. So, we may go with that. But we have one more that I want to test. It's another Motomaster, if I don't drop it. This one here states it is a 400 watt inverter. It is all plastic, so there's my first worry there. It does have these really nice twist lock lugs on them. If I can get that off, there we go. That seems, that seems for high current rated. No, I'm happy with that. Um, digital controls. I'm assuming there's a digital display there. And if we flip it over, it's playing the same old game here. Uh, let's see if that'll focus. Nope, not, not 400 watts. 320 watts, 2.8 amps, continuous. 400 watts for five minutes. Does it have that same warning on here? doesn't. It just says neutral floating. Interesting. Okay, let's wire this one up here and try it. All right, we're plugged in. Let's put the power button. And there we go. So our line voltage in is 12.5 volts, which is the battery. Uh, our voltage out right now should be 120. And our power output right now is zero. Okay, that makes sense. And, oh, what the voltage? Um, 84 volts. There we go. 84 volts. Okay. Our line frequency right now is 34, 36, 40 hertz. Power factor of zero makes sense. 100 watt load. Turn that on. Okay. Seems dim. Huh. Okay, it's fine. I'm 
many amps are we drawing? 0.8. Our watts are 50. What's our voltage? 80 volts, 79 volts. What did you say you were? Uh, 120. Someone's a liar. 56, 70. Feel like that there is. Is that percentage? Like, or what is that? Something's not right there. Why are. Oh, that's interesting. So, between the front of this car and the back of it here, I've run a 12 gauge, 30 amp rated wire. Uh, it's fused up at the front. Uh, there's a T junction here. This outlet here, like I mentioned before, 15 amps with a circuit breaker protection. Um, and even though it's 12 gauge, it must be a little bit too long, and I am incurring a voltage drop over such a long length, so it's actually lost a volt whenever I apply this load. But it seems to be okay, other than right now we're missing a, like, a lot of volts. This is a lot dimmer than it was with the other inverters. So I'm already suspect something might be wrong with this. But hey, 400 watts. Let's see if we can do the 200 watt bulb. All right, here we are again. 200 watt bulb is in. We're in the off position there. It says 94 volts. Frequency 33, that seems about right. This here is reading 12.4. I really don't like this glossy cover. Power on, is it gonna do it? Oh. I mean, that's unhappy. really doesn't like this. What is our voltage? 72 volts is too low. Frequency is too low. It is lighting. What is this? Ooh. Ten point three volts. We've lost over two volts now of pull down. That's wrong. 126. So this is way over load. Okay. Man, it's almost like good inverters are actually cheap inverters, and there's a lot of crap inverters that can end up being thrown out. So we can assume that for every single inverter we've tried today, like maybe 100, 120 watts, totally fine. 200 watts, no. And even for the one here that says that it could probably do it, the answer is no. But, uh... Unfortunately, we're not going to use that one. I have my multiple issues now. But yeah, okay. So, I'm just going to use this one here. Throw that one in the car. And off we go for this trip.